Right then guys, so you want to do a little bit of feeder fishing for bream. And in this video, we're going to show you how. We're going to give you some quick, simple tips on how to get feeder fishing. So let's jump straight into it, shall we? So I'm going to assume for this that you already have feeders, hooks, hook length. So all you're going to need, feeder, thread, feeder, straight onto line. Line has already been threaded through the feeder. So you want about a foot. Boom. Straight tire knot in there. Throw that back through there. And you want the first knot to be at the end, like so. So there's your feeder, knot there, boom. So now that can run up and down the line and it stops there, perfect. Now what you need to do, throw your feeder back down to the knot that you've just made, make another knot about three quarters of the way down. Boom. Always wet your knots, obviously. Then tie another knot about halfway down from there. Boom. So now you've got knot there, knot there, knot there. Perfect. That runs up and down. Smash in. Now the end wants to sit below the feeder as long as that sits below the feeder you're good now grab some hook length i've got maybe a foot and a half of hook length there i'm using an eight pound main line six pound hook length perfect tie a loop knot in there boom wet your knots obviously cut off the excess so now you've got a loop and a hook length so you want this ring straight over the top of the main line hoop thread the end of the hook length through the main line hoop boom attached smash in tighten the rod up a little bit hooks wise we always use Amazon B560s, these are a size 14. If I'm getting into some big, big fish, we'll go down to a size 12. And we're straight, just gonna hand tie this on here. Do have a video on how to do this close up. So if you wanna watch that video, guys, I'll link it up there. So we're quickly just gonna tie that on here. Wait your knots, pull tight, cut off excess. And there you go. In two minutes, we've got a effective feeder fishing rig. Perfect. So now guys, the only thing left to do is do a bit of fishing. We're here at 6 a.m. because the best times to catch these fish are really early or really late on an afternoon. You can go midday, but it's not as prolific. So let's see what bait we're using, shall we? So you're all set up. You're ready to go. Let's have a look at what bait we're using. So I come fishing a lot. So to try and combat spending a lot of money on bait and ground bait and stuff, what I'll do is make my own ground bait. You can go, your best option is going and, but if you go in every now and again, fair enough, go buy a bag of ground bait for four or five pounds or whatever it is. But because I come a lot, I'll use maybe a kilo of ground bait every single session, you know what I mean? That cost would soon add up. So I like to make my own. So what we've got here, is a load of white crumb, maybe half a kilo of white crumb, and I'll top that up 50-50 with molehill soil. And then in there, we'll put some particle in there, which is in the form of dead red maggots and a little bit of corn, just for a little bit of extra feed for the fish. And then hook bait wise, all I'll use is, I'll buy half a pint of red dead maggots, a little bit of corn, and some worms you do not really need much more bait than that there's no point in having nine bait tubs of bait on your tray you know what i mean it's just not that necessary it costs you a lot of money every session and i find that you don't really need that much bait or that many different varieties of bait if you could just bring half a pint of red dead maggots a little bit of corn and some worms those are the most predominant baits to catch bream on. So that's all we usually bring. I'll try different things here and there. The only thing I would add to this, if I was in a match maybe, is half a pint of casters. I'll try those on the hook and we'll use those in the ground bait as well. But 
on a normal session like this, they're not really needed. We're sort of on a pleasure session. Not that important that we bring something like that. Yes, it may catch you the odd fish, but in my experience, it doesn't catch you a lot of fish. So we use the dead red maggots. So once you've got all that sorted, it's time to do a little bit of fishing. So first thing I will always do is start off with three dead maggots. Prime bait, bream cannot resist. Boom, perfect. And then we'll just fill that feeder up. And now it's time to cast. On most rivers, see, I know that this peg is the deepest just past the middle, so that's where I'm going to throw. But on a normal river, on your river, you probably won't know how deep it is and where it's deep sort of thing. So your best option is just to fish the middle of the river. That deep channel in the middle will naturally collect bait. Gravity will pull it all to the deepest point of the river. That's where the fish will feed, especially bream. Have a couple of casts, get to where you need to be, and then clip up. Always use a clip, unless you think there might be barbel. If there's barbel, don't clip up, because if a barbel hits a clip, your full rig's gone. You're hindering a fish pretty badly, which is a nightmare. But here, there aren't any. Never seen one. Got a bleak on there already. Let go, eyes let go. Yeah, there aren't any barbel around here. So I can use my clip, which 95% of the time I will use that clip. And it's kind of vital to hit the exact same spot every single time. Once it hits the water, hold the rod and wait to feel the feeder hitting the bottom. Once it's hit the bottom, put it on your rest, gently tighten up to the feeder. Like that. And you're fishing. Now all you've got to do is wait for a bite. Now what I will do when casting is I will give it eight to 10 minutes, maybe a little bit less than that in the first hour. Maybe every five to seven minutes we will recast. And it is vital, vital that you recast on a regular basis. You need to develop the peg, you need to develop the swim. So yeah, we'll give this five to 10 minutes, recast, 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 and then we'll go to maybe every 10 minutes after about the first hour. What you sort of want is to start getting bites and then let that determine how fast you're casting. Because if you can get a, a bite every four or five minutes, perfect. That means the peg will develop faster. You'll be into some nice fish. So yeah, we're going to put everything we've just learned into practice. We're going to do a load of casting. Hopefully some fish turn up. Let's go. Boom. Yes. And just like that, guys. We're into our first fish. Feels like a good one. This is what it is all about. Come on. want yeah perfect exactly what we came for some regular casting and we're straight away got our first big slab in the net and that is a big slab big slab let's have a look at you 
Oh, beautiful fish for a first fish. Good. <laughs> I can't even get my hand off the back of its head. I actually can't. That's all you know. Boom. And there you have it. Yes. Carry on with your regular casting and more will turn up. And that is how guys, you go feeder fishing for bream. Amazing stuff. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate you going down below, smashing that like button. Also, maybe consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next episode.